When it comes to health care, consumers have many choices. From among insurance plans, physicians, and or hospitals, consumers can make the appropriate health care choices. But few know that if the situation should arise, the same can be said about hospice and palliative care. Even when facing a life-limiting illness, people have choices. Coming up on Polk Place, we will talk with Chapters Health. Make sure you stick around. Welcome to Polk Place. I'm your host, Jeremy Moretti, and with me today, we have three wonderful guests here joining us in the studio. Uh, the first is Ryan Genson, who's the Director of Professional Relations, Mary Grendel, who is the Clinical Administrator for Good Shepherd Hospice, and a familiar face, mm -hmm. Adam Stanfield, who is the Vice President of Development and the Executive Director for Chapters Health Foundation. How you doing? Thank you guys so much for coming in. All right, thanks, thanks for having us. It is great to see all y'all here, and uh, we love having you come in and uh, share with us a little bit about what you guys are doing. Well, but we have a very familiar face back with us again. Yeah. And uh, in a I, different I, role I, now. I clean up pretty well, huh? Y yeah, you do. <laughs> I, I yeah. like that. Yeah. So tell us, Adam, a little bit about what you're doing, and uh, you're in a new role now. I am, absolutely. And, and we appreciate you all having us out because. Uh, uh, hospice care and uh, Chapters Health System and the Good Shepherd Hospice are, are all very, very intimate things for myself and my family. And this is this is kind of a career change that has happened over time. I really enjoyed my time at SPCA Floyd, and we did a lot of great things in our community. And I'm looking to to do that with uh, on the chapter side and on the the hospice side. But you know, one of my issues is that you know. I got turned on to hospice back in 2005 through a chance conversation with the principal back in Atlanta, a principal of an inpatient facility. Hospice is just so misunderstood throughout all the communities. And it's really amazing to think because something that's been around for so long, you know, the perception out there in the, in the general population is just, it is the place to go to in your last couple of days of life. And that is anything um, but accurate. You know, we have a whole complement of services that we can apply and what better way to educate the community or begin educating the community about those services than uh, bring in Mary uh, who is our clinical administrator and, and Ryan who is our director of Pro uh, professional relations our community engagement arm for the Good Shepherd Hospice uh, organization. Good Shepherd is a big name within the Polk Island and Hardee's counties which is where we serve and again we just want to begin removing the cloak about what hospice is all about. And from a foundation perspective, we are here to support them day in and day out. Every dollar that we raise from a foundation perspective is gonna come back to them in helping champion the delivery of uh, quality care uh, throughout our community. So again, thank you uh, for inviting us out and you know participating in this. Well, Good Shepherd I, has been around now for quite a while and has really become a household name for a lot of families here. Mm -hmm. and. You know, everybody that <clears throat> I've talked to that's come into contact with you guys, nothing but, you know, raving reviews on the, the style of care and, you know, everything that you guys provide. But for those people that don't know, that haven't, you know, gone through that process before, can you kind of get into a little bit on what you guys do? Certainly. Uh, we provide um, health care services to those at end of life. And what end of life is, is can vary, but it's, from a Medicare perspective, it's defined as a physician certifying that they have six months or less. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we, our intention is, is to come in and, and alleviate all the pressures that are on a family and a patient during this very difficult time, whether it's medical pressures, issues, symptom management, um, psychosocial, obviously the stress of having your loved one um, in a state of, at end of life, um, spiritual issues. We have a full complement of spiritual counselors that help assist the patients and the families through this, again, very difficult um, time in their, in their lives. Well, I think you're kind of underselling it here a little bit. <laughs> because, I mean, that it encompasses so much mm -hmm. on so many different levels for members of the community. Because, you know, even in the, you know, was it 40 years now? Yes. Yeah, 40 years that y'all have been around. Um, Polk County is really diversified in, mm -hmm. you know, the, the types of folks that we have here. 
and you don't just cater to the patients either you really you're there for the whole family the right? whole family the whole community uh, family can be defined as their immediate blood relation family the family can be in a facility for all the caregivers that have cared for um, their residents for many years so we care for whoever that community that is surrounding that patient and what are some of those things that you guys do to, to help you know walk a, a family through that process well we start obviously we start with the general patient comfort that is number one mm -hmm. I mean we're here for quality of life um, it's I think for all of us, we want good quality of life. It's not always quantity that's important. So we look first that we have their pain under control, anxiety, shortness of breath, whatever their physical symptoms may be. And then as I mentioned, the psychosocial, really looking at are there financial resources that they need, community resources that can come in and assist them in the home. Anything that we can do to keep them where they're comfortable, where they want to die, that's what we want to provide to them. Okay. The extensiveness of the, the services is broad, as, as you're asking. I mean, the, the, the patient comfort is critical to uh, our mission. But again, the family is broad, and, you know, the things that we do begin before the, the patient passes, but it also remains after the fact. You know, we have uh, an extensive bereavement uh, program that is uh, held, you know, throughout the community and is supported through foundation dollars. Uh, counseling, one-on-one -on -one counseling after the loved one passes. We have a, uh, Camp Braveheart, which is a, a camp for children who have experienced loss within the uh, 12 months or less, that they can go enjoy a weekend and just be normal and mm -hmm. you know attempt to get back to life. And we have a great program that draws from those emotions that are inside as a means to you know cope and deal with you know that loss because it can be significant. When someone you know gets that diagnosis what's the step that they need to go through to contact you guys is it the family that contacts you is it a physician a hospital how does that how how do the points meet so the referral process um, our job first and foremost is professional relations is to educate the community mm -hmm. um, so without us being out there educating the community that referral source wouldn't happen um, Mary's team is the backbone of what we do. If they didn't do such a wonderful job out there, we, our name wouldn't be what it is out there for us to do our job. Um, so we have seven current PRRs, professional relation representatives, that cover Polk, Hardy, and Highlands counties. Um, on any given day, we touch anywhere from 70 to 100 accounts. And within this accounts, it can be assisted living, independent living, a nursing home, physician office, hospitals, um, and you think about when you go to the doctor, there's what, four, five, six, seven, twelve people working in that physician practice. We talk to all of those people in the practice. Um, so our goal is to educate as many people as possible um, in any, every single day of the week on our hospice services, dispel the myth of six months um, or, you know, dispel the myth of when I hear the word hospice, that's it. I've got a couple days left. Mm -hmm. well, no, it's a six month benefit. Um, so that's our job is to educate the community. So as we educate the referral sources, um, that's who then knows to call us because we're the ones in their house. Okay. Mm -hmm. So whether it, it's any of those sources Correct. that you guys have made contact Correct. with and you, know, you guys are doing a continual conversation on you know, hey, this person might you know, be good for you guys to, to come in at this point and, and just get a hold of you and put you in touch with that. Absolutely. Family. There are certain guidelines that have to be met, sure. obviously. Um, but again, that's part of the education process. That's part of what we do in the community um, on a daily basis. Okay. And now, oh, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, you know, part of, part of the education process is with the relationship with the providers, you know, the, the, the physician group or whoever it is that's taking care of this patient and getting the, the timely referral to the hospice program and, and talking with the family, consulting with the family, now is the time that you should probably be bringing in hospice. And they will provide contact information for um, our, and, uh, what is it, admissions team. And that's when the whole process starts. You know, once the, the contact happens, then the admission teams takes over and begins putting the, the plans in place to bring that uh, patient into our care and, you know, ascertaining what their individual needs are, whether it's home-based, inpatient-based, however that works. Okay. Now, um, one of the, the difficulties that we talked about you know, 
before coming on um, was you know not just those last few days you know getting that referral and you know getting that that process started but you know six months out <clears throat> can you talk a little bit about how that works and identifying that six month time period and also it's not just a hey if you're not done by six months we're kicking you out of here kind of thing correct because mm -hmm. I, I don't want people to get the the wrong impression that it's just a six month program here correct yeah you know, nobody has a perfect crystal ball so all we can ask is that um, based on the assessment that our physicians will decide if their diagnosis and condition has a if it were to follow its natural trajectory that it that the patient should pass within about six months but as you mentioned many of our patients exceed the six months sure. because they're continuing to decline and they certainly need our services but thankfully a lot of times because of our support and because of our um, medication management they actually live longer mm -hmm. than when they were predicted to live at the time of referral so we've had patients especially who have more um, uh, diagnoses that aren't as cancer has a kind of a pretty predictable trajectory as far as how patients are going to do diagnoses such as Alzheimer's, cardiac disease, COPD. It's not as predictable. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, we certainly have patients with us for up to a year or two. Yeah, some days you have good days and others are bad days. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, Absolutely. And, you know, we're very lucky. We are the only hospice provider in our area that has inpatient services. So we actually have three hospice houses, one in Sebring and then two in Polk County, um, to provide even more support to a family and to a patient if they get into crisis. Or severe shortness of breath, severe pain, anything like that, we can bring them in, stabilize them, and get them right back home. Okay. It avoids the hospital and helps keep them closer to their family. And that's going to become a, a, a more prominent point for us going forward through chapters and then also the Good Shepherd in the fact that we do have the inpatient unit and can take care of the patient in, in many, many different ways. A lot of times what happens is the, the patient will experience some type of situation at home and get nervous and then automatically go to the ER just because that's what they've been conditioned to do over time. But you know, the first thing Mary ha has on her badge, you call us first badge mm -hmm. or button. And you know, one of the things that we want to communicate to everybody that's within our program is that you need to call us first because we can make sure that that care is delivered through the proper channels. And it's not going to necessarily always mean going back into the hospital because the hospital has, you know, um, uh, monitors that as well. You know, and again, as we get better communications with the hospital environments, then the care ultimately is going to end up being better in the long run. Which is Absolutely. Now, in addition to the, the care that you provide, you're also now coming in and bringing some community awareness with yourself and yeah. you know, doing some events that are coming up. Do you want to talk a little bit about those? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's where the foundation um, and sharing with uh, our administrative team, our executive team, we have a brand new CEO over the whole system. His name is Andrew Miloski. He's a great guy. And he absolutely wants to embrace philanthropy within our environment. And that's my job okay they brought me in to to make that happen and one of our key partners is ryan and his team in the field because they're out there as ambassadors and we want to increase contacts within uh the assisted living facilities and the physician groups and things like that to invite them into our family of giving and that's uh, something that we're going to do through the corporate honor roll program we can also raise money in support of mary and, and ryan's team members when they do deliver exceptional care you know to the patient we have something called the shining star program and that is where somebody can say thank you for providing care to my mom before she passed you know we thought you guys did an excellent job matter of fact we had a uh, shining star program uh, donation come through about two months ago it was twenty thousand dollar gift and that was really really something that we appreciated and, and what we'll do is we'll turn that out and uh, uh, apply it in a way that just continues to promote excellence across our, our system. As far as events go, uh, for this particular community as a whole, we have a Holidays for Hospice program, which I think is just an exceptional uh, community-based event. It's kind of celebration of the holiday season coming up. That's I think it's in November, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. And uh, this will be my first time through, so I'm really looking forward to experiencing that. And of course, we have sponsorship opportunities available with that. And we also have a Lights of Remembrance program, which uh, is the lighting, our annual lighting of the Christmas trees. And we do that throughout all of our communities, uh, Lakeland House, Auburndale, Sebring, 
um, Forsyth, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that is something that is going to be really, really an amazing experience. And I'm real excited about this. We have something in the spring called One Night of Gospel. Mm -hmm. Is that right? And this is an event that takes place and it's just kind of mushroomed into this really, really cool event because of the, the music and the family orientation and family just coming out and enjoying a, a nice evening of, uh, of wonderful music. So again, all of those are um, entries into the, the giving program uh, through the Ch uh, Chapters Health Foundation. And again, we're going to apply. Many of the people out there in the community know about our corporate honor roll, which is something that I rolled out at SPCA Florida. We will do the same thing uh, through Chapters in Good Shepherd because it's a really slick way to say, hey, I want to support you. And that way it, it, we do it one time a year, and that way we don't have to keep on coming back and saying, hey, do you want to sponsor this? Do you want to sponsor that? So, uh, you know, that will be coming out soon, and we're very, very excited and, uh, about everything we have going on. Sounds great. Yeah. Man. Thank you guys for what you do, and thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank we appreciate you. it. Thank you. As a compassionate, not-for-profit organization, Chapters Health System is committed to enhancing the lives of those affected by advancing age or illness. Through their comprehensive system of healthcare choices, they deliver expert care and heartfelt support to guide the community they serve, Polk Highlands and Hardy Counties, during the aging and end-of-life journey. From hospice and palliative care for adults and children suffering with life-limiting illness to in-home and community-based services for frail but independent seniors, Chapters Health System offers a wide range of support services along life's ever-changing landscape. For more information, you can give them a call at 866-204-8611 or look them up on the web at www.chaptershealth.org.